again in our traditional therapy sessions we're coming in through that phonological processing system we're talking a lot to our kids sometimes we're using those picture icons we're you know using a lot of those systems but we haven't necessarily brought in literacy now until we bring print into our sessions we're not going to access the orthographic processor the orthographic processor can only be activated stimulated with print and what research find is, finds is that orthographic processor is the processor that turns on that whole reading system. Reading is really first and foremost a visual input. So the sooner that we can get that awareness for our kids that that printed word has this rich language behind it, or for those kids that struggle with decoding, get that phonological awareness behind it, the easier we're going to be able to establish and build up those two lower processing systems, the phonological processor and orthographic processor for decoding. And that graphing phoneme correlation will also help to build phonological awareness. So once my student can look at that letter and can give me that sound that goes along with it, so we know the orthographic processor is communicating with the phonological processor, I'll go ahead and introduce the print. So I'll ask them, where is the letter C? Yeah, that's right. Now, do you remember what sound the C makes? K yeah, you got it. Now, can you say ow? Yeah, very good. And so I've picked, like I said, eight to 10 target words. We're going to segment all of those. So we're going to produce that word segmented, and then we're going to begin to blend it together. So once they can segment all of those words without any difficulty, begin blending them together. So we said, or we're going to point to the letter C, and a lot of times they can begin to fill that sound in. Now say, ow, yeah, that's right. Now we're going to put those sounds together, and we're going to make a word. Can you say the word cow for me? Yeah, you got it. So we're going to talk about how to begin to work in isolation. So with my kids, I begin by introducing that sound in isolation with that letter. So it doesn't matter how you introduce the letter. You know, you can have a chalkboard if you have that in your room. A dry erase board works great because you can use that over and over again. If you just have a piece of paper and a pencil, that works. So as you're beginning to introduce that sound, you want that child to be able to see the letter that goes along with it. So then as they're looking at words, there's an attachment there. They see the letter and they have the sound that goes along with it. So for my kids, what I'll do is I'll put a C on a piece of paper on the table and I'll tell them, this is the letter C and it makes a K sound. Can you make a K sound? Yeah, very good. Okay, now can you show me where the C is? Can you point to the C? You got it. Now tell me again, what sound does it make? K, very good. Once we have that sound letter correlation down with a C, I'll introduce a K. Same thing. This is a letter K and it makes a K sound. Can you show, show me the letter K? Yeah, and what sound does it make? K, you got it. And then we'll go back and forth. You know, where's the K? Where's the C? what sound do those letters make until we have correct production and then I then and they can identify the letters correctly that's a letter g and it makes e. a g sound g. yay good job give me five you're awesome Hi, cook. open Now, some children with speech sound disorders have that phonological conception of the word. So as soon as they see a cow, they think tau. And so as soon as we bring out that picture, that's exactly what they start saying is tau. So we're really working against ourselves by bringing that picture or that object out first. So by working with print, they can see that sound letter correlation that we've worked on. They can see that word, they're correctly producing that word and then we're going to put that object or that picture along with it. Now for our kids with autism, we can work a couple of different ways here. So for our kids with hyperlexia, once I have that 
word down. So we've created some phonological awareness while we're working with that print that they're, they're so familiar with. We're going to bring that picture in. So then I will have the picture along with the print at the same time. So they're very familiar with the print and now they see the picture with it. So sometimes I'll talk about it for a while like this while they can see the print and the picture. Sometimes I'll cover the print up and we'll have a long discussion. What is a cow? Is that transportation or is that an animal? It's an animal. I guess it could be transportation, but it's an, it's an animal. Where would you find a cow? On a farm. What does a cow give us? Milk. You're going to have all of these conversations about a cow. We're building that meaning processor as much as we can. And so then as you keep going through these words, as you come across them, you're eventually going to cover up that print and just have that picture and see if you have that meaning processor that's working at the same time. See if that meaning processor has then attached to those lower processors so we have the word and the meaning at the same time. So there's different ways you can do this. By the time you get to this point, if you really have that weakness with that speech sound disorder, you know, show that word, show that object at that same time. But if you really have that weakness with the meaning processor, that weakness with vocabulary, and you have hyperlexia too, try covering up that word and really talking about that, that picture. You know, maybe grab your computer and Google it so that you can see all sorts of different cows. So you can, again, build up that meaning processor as much as possible. So once that student can correctly produce that word, we now have it in sentences. We have some print awareness that's blossoming. I like to send home books as homework. So many parents have great intentions of reading at home, but when you add autism to the mix, it becomes even more difficult to read at home. So, so many homes across America were not having shared reading activities happening. So when you send home a book as homework, it happens, or hopefully it happens, or hopefully at least they think about it more because it is homework. And there are many different ways you can do the reproducible books, but I really do like those because you kind of send it home and it's that hint of not only do you need to do that shared reading, but here are some ideas of how you can do it so you can talk to parents about it. Plus, if they're sound loaded books and you've been working with a lot of those sounds, your students may be familiar with a lot of those words. So some of those, those characters, some of those words may be familiar to them. So you can take those words that you've been working on and create your own books and send those home. So you have a very goal-oriented book that you're sending home with those kids. There's a lot of different websites also that offer free target sound books. DLT Kids offers some great reproducibles and the website for them is dltk-kids.com and then Mother's Hubbard's Cupboard also offers some great reproducibles for free. That's H-U-B-B-A-R-D-S C-U-P-B-O-A-R-D dot com.